This table is going to be made with some quarter saw and white oak. They're pretty rough, so I'm going to need to clean them up. But before we get any further, if you're not already subscribed, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. Both of those would be greatly appreciated. To get these boards ready for the glue up, I'm going to need to joint each edge and then run the face of each board over the jointer as well to give me a flat reference surface. This will allow me to run them through the planer and have even boards all throughout. If you're hesitant to get a jointer or planer, I would really recommend just jumping in and doing it. It opens you up to a whole new world of woodworking projects you can do. You will find that you get a lot of use out of them and it really opens you up to purchasing a lot of varieties of wood that maybe aren't as clean or need a lot more prep work done for them before you can use them. But you'll find you'll actually save a lot of money in the long run not having to buy surfaced on four sides boards and it also allows you to do a lot more projects when you can plane and size a board down to a specific size. So after running them through the jointer and getting one square edge and one square face, I run them through the planer to get them down to the thickness that I'm going to need. And make sure to keep the jointed side face down so that the boards are always staying nice and flat on the surface and I don't have any issues with cupping or uneven boards. And I'm just going to do this until all the boards are done. And you will notice that one of the edges is still rough, but that will be taken care of on the table saw. So after they're all cleaned up on three of the sides, they're looking pretty good, and then I can start running them through the table saw. I'm using this digital reader to make sure I'm right at 90 degrees because that's very important for doing any sort of panel glue ups. So I'm just going to run each of the boards through the table saw and get that rough edge off of each one. And then, because I don't exactly trust my jointer to be exactly 90 degrees, I'm going to run the other edge through the table saw as well so that I know both edges of these boards are exactly 90 degrees. And that's going to make my panel glue up much easier. There are ways of adjusting for not having perfectly 90 degree cuts, and some people like to just do these processes anyways, but I haven't had any issues with this process doing my panel glue ups. My accuracy certainly seems to be good enough. Before gluing and clamping, I'm just going to arrange the boards in the way that I think looks best. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have all the same size boards right next to each other, and that I have some decent variation just to make the panel look the best. I'm also going to number each board so that they don't lose their place, because off camera I end up cutting each board down to the exact same size so that I don't have any unnecessarily long pieces when I do my glue up. And numbering them just ensures that they are all going to stay in the same orientation and in the same order. For the gluing process, there's nothing too fancy. I'm just going to place some glue on one edge of each joint and then spread it out with a spreader. You need to make sure that you have enough glue so that there's just a little bit of squeeze out in each joint when you clamp them together. You don't want too much and you're going to end up having more to clean up than what's necessary. But if you don't have any squeeze out, then you probably don't have enough glue. So you would probably want to make sure that you go back in and add some more. I'm also going to use the mallet while there's some pressure on the boards to hammer them more flush with each other, just because sometimes they're not perfectly lined with each other. And then I use some clamps on any of the edges where I feel like there's some risk or chance that they might separate from each other and become uneven. Then I add some clamps on top for some added stability and clamping pressure in the opposite direction. Once I get the clamps off, I'm ready to prep the surface. I'm just going to scrape off all of the glue squeeze out and then I'm going to sand down the entire surface, both sides of the boards. I just want to make sure that everything is smooth and that there's not any sort of uneven variations between any of the boards. And this is also the preparation for the finishing later. To turn this tabletop into a round tabletop, I'm going to use this circle jig with the router combined with an up and down router bit. And the key here is to just take it slow and let the router do the work. And yeah, it makes an absolutely gigantic mess, but there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Other than get someone to help you in the garage when you need a helping hand and maybe hold the hose for you and vacuum it up while it's coming out. But, and I'm not going to name any names here, my usual helper made some sort of excuse about taking care of the toddler and the baby at the time I was doing this, and she wasn't able to come help me. Excuses, excuses. Now that I have a very circle-y circle, I'm just going to sand all the edges to make sure that they're smooth and even out any blemishes left by the router. I'm also going to go ahead and use a roundover bit with the router to make sure that the edges of both the top and the bottom of the tabletop 
are smooth and soft to the touch. This is definitely a step you don't want to skip. Now that the tabletop is done, I can start the complicated process of creating the splay joinery base. And to do this, I actually used an online calculator, and I will put a link in the description below for that. That is incredibly useful and it does all the math for you and you can just input the different sizes and kind of figure out what works best for you. So the first jig I'm going to make is going to make one of the cuts on the table saw. And the angles I make on these cuts are all just dependent on what the calculator spit out for me based on the size of the shape that I wanted to make. It's very important to be incredibly accurate here. So that's why I'm using the digital reader for the table saw and I made sure my miter cuts were as close to accurate as they could be. So this first jig I made has a slight taper in it created by the miter cut that I made on the miter saw. And this jig is specifically for one side of each board. As the jig works through the table saw, it creates the bevel, but it also slightly narrows the board. And it's really simple to just run each of the boards through it repeatedly. And now that I have each of those boards cut on one side, I can make the next jig. You just need to be careful to make sure that you're keeping the orientations correct. I need the bevel to go in the opposite direction, but I need the board to widen this time as opposed to getting more narrow as it slides through the table saw. And that's because on the first pass, I started at the top of each board, but now I'm going to be starting at the bottom of each board. So I need to make sure I'm creating that triangular shape. And then I'm going to mark the width of the bottom of the board. And this is because this is my known end point. This is the exact width that the calculator spit out for me as for what the bottom of each board should look like. So at this point, I'm not really concerned about the overall length. As long as one end is the exact size, I can cut it down to size later, and then each board will be the exact same width on both ends. So after I get that first pass through, I'm just going to slightly nudge the table saw fence so I can just sneak up on that mark that I made. And then once I get it exactly where I like, I can just start running the rest of the boards through the table saw using my jig. And at this point, it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty foolproof. I won't know if it was actually foolproof until I start trying to assemble them later, but at this point, ignorance is bliss. Making sure the miter saw is set to the correct bevel to ensure that the base sits flat, I'm going to cut each of the boards to length. I need to use the jig from earlier to make sure that my angles are all still correct. I can't just set each board flat against the 90 degree fence. And the jig actually has a nice built-in little sop block for me as well. Now that all the boards are cut, I'm ready for assembly. And side note here, laying down tape upside down is a lot more annoying than it needs to be. For the glue up, I'm just going to place each board right next to the other, making sure that I get that slow curved shape that I'm looking for. I'm just going to put a bunch of glue in between each of the boards and not really too worried about how much squeeze out because it's going to be inside the base. And before you ask or are wondering, I did do a dry fit assembly before I did this glue up process. I'm not crazy. No matter how much care and consideration I put into this and no matter how sure I was that everything was going to be correct, I would not risk doing a glue up on this project before doing a dry fit assembly. That's just a little too brave for me. Now to just let it dry, and I added these straps, but honestly, I don't think they really did anything. Due to the shape, I don't think they were really able to keep a very good grip. So I get the tape removed, and I'm really happy with the overall quality and look. The shape and size came out just as I envisioned, and I don't know about you, but I think those joints look pretty dang good. And now time for what is by far the worst step in this project, and that is sanding all of these corners off to give a more cylindrical look. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time showing you this process, but I just work through the different sanding grits until I get it to where I want, and all of the corners are rounded out. It took quite a while to work through them all because this white oak is very hard, but I do have to say the results do speak for themselves, and it looks quite nice. To attach my tabletop, I'm going to use these figure eight fasteners. These are great because they allow for the natural wood movement, but they're also really easy to install. Simply use a four-turn bit to make a recess in the wood, drill a pilot hole, attach a screw, and you're done. So I'm going to end up doing this process four times for my tabletop. 
And after drawing a circle in the center of the underside of the tabletop, I'm going to go ahead and mark out where each of these four holes will be for attaching the top to the base. Then it's just a matter of drilling the holes using my tape so I don't punch through the top of the table. I'm going to sand off those pencil marks. And then go ahead and screw these fasteners to the underside of the table. This was a little challenging due to the angle of my base, but a little patience and they go in. Now let's flip this guy over and get our first look. Looking very nice. And you'll probably notice it's not very tall, and that's because this is going to end up being a children's table. Before I can apply my finish, I'm going to make sure that I get everything as clean as possible and remove as much dust as possible. So I'm just going to use some mineral spirits and wipe everything down. And it should be noted that I made sure to saturate the surfaces with water before doing this, just so that I could pop the grain. Because the mineral spirits would have popped the grain as well if I didn't do that already. For my finish here, I'm fulfilling my contractual obligations as a woodworker on YouTube, and I'm applying some Rubio Monocoat. One of the reasons I'm going with this finish is, for one, it's easy to apply, so it works great when there's vertical surfaces, but also it's going to leave a very natural look. I'm going with the natural finish color as opposed to the pure because I don't want it to really change the color at all. And the natural has some lightening pigments in it that will prevent any sort of yellowing of the wood. So I'm just going to follow the processes for application laid out on the can. So for this, I'm just going to spread the finish out over the entire surface. And then I'm going to get a white polishing pad to really scrub it into all of the pores so that the finish can really bond and adhere to the wood fibers. I let that sit for about 5 to 10 minutes and then wipe off all of the excess until nothing comes off. And you want to make sure that you get a clean cloth as needed so you're not just continuously spreading the finish everywhere. The last time you wipe the finish off should basically have nothing left on the cloth. And at that point, you're done. You can just let it cure. Well, here's the finished product. The next step is going to be making some chairs for this table, but that's a problem for future me. If you've made it this far, thanks for that. That's awesome. I would really love for you to hit that subscribe button and like this video. Those things really help me out. Thanks for watching, and I truly hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Until then, Happy building.